way in me. Praise God. All He asks that we just surrender to Him and let Him have His way in our lives. Praise God. If you love the Lord, give Him a great hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah. Praise His wonderful name. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want you to turn in your Bibles. Today I want to preach the final sermon in the series, Building and Restoring. It comes to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4. And today we're going to look at verses 7 through 23. So Nehemiah, chapter 4, verses 7 through 23. It's where our text, we'll be taking our text from today. I want you to notice as we read this text, because what I'm going to preach to you about today, the title of my sermon is Satan's Devices. Satan's Devices. Satan is hard at work trying to hinder and trying to stop the work of God. And as we read this today, I want you to notice all the people who tried to have a say in Nehemiah's work. God called Nehemiah. God touched the heart of Nehemiah. Sent him back to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls that had been broken down for 180 years. People walking by the rubble. But look at, the, look at everybody trying to have a say in his work. The Bible says, beginning in verse 7, But it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah, the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites, heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up, and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth, and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. You've got to watch. You've got to be alert because your enemy, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, seeketh, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. In verse 10, And Judah said, And Judah, the praise team said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. When we reach the point that we say we're not able to do it, we're in trouble. And our adversaries said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said, this is the Jews that have been been scattered all abroad that lived outside of Jerusalem. When they came, they said unto us ten times, From all places whence you shall return unto us, they will, the enemy will be upon you. Therefore said I, Nehemiah said, The lower places behind the wall and on the higher places. I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. When you get discouraged, remember the Lord. Amen. Which is great and terrible, and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your house. Don't just remember God. Remember all the ones that will be affected by what you do and the decisions you make. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to, to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one to his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that half of my servants wrought in the work and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, the bows, and, and the harbingers, which is the coat of mail, the armor that they wore. And the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. And the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. And they which builded on the wall, and they that bear the burdens were those that ladded. Every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. 
For the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall one from another. That's why the trumpeters were there. The trumpeter could sound and uh, pass the message around the wall from one station to the other. In what place therefore you hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye tither unto us, our God shall fight for us. Glory to God. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. And likewise, at the same time, I said unto the people, I said unto the people, Let everyone with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, and stay behind the walls, is what he said, that in the night they, they might be on guard for, to us and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, save in every one put them off for washing in other words they stayed clothed dressed armed and ready amen be satan's devices let's pray together fathers we come to you in prayer we're so thankful for this wonderful congregation that's gathered here today to hear your word we're thankful god for every regular attender for every member and god we praise you for every guest that's come this way today to be a part of this service and what we know that not one person is here by accident today all have lord all that are here today are part of a divine plan God, for this service, for this day, and I pray today that your will would be done, and we'll give you praise for all that you do. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. So God sends Nehemiah back to Jerusalem. Nehemiah had been a cupbearer for a foreign king, a king that at one time had been against Jerusalem. He lived in a town that one time was against the house of God against Jerusalem, but God put in the heart of Nehemiah to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls. The walls were torn down for 180 years. People walked by the rubble. They were used to it. Those that had ret- those Jews that had returned to Jerusalem, they are used to the rubble. They thought nothing of it. They left it as it was. But God said, I'm going to send a leader, and I'm going to put it in the heart of that leader that he is to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, and we're going to stop the enemy from coming in and going out as he pleases. We're going to stop the enemy from tormenting and torturing those that live inside Jerusalem, those that come to the place of worship in Jerusalem. We're going to stop the enemy from wrecking havoc on their lives and from stealing and from discouraging and from mocking them. We're going to shut the enemy out. Amen. And so God put in the heart of Nehemiah to go back and be a leader and to lead in the rebuilding of the walls. But can I tell you, amen, that every work of God that you set out on, it, you can know that you know that you know that you've been called by God and you can be under divine assignment and still you have to know the enemy is going to resist the work of God. He always has and he always will. Jesus came to this earth. He came with a mission. His mission was to order organize the church, uh, to put the church together, to, to build up leaders that would take the church uh, and run with it once he departed this earth. Uh, and Jesus came to earth with a mission to die. He came knowing that he was going to have to give his life uh, a ransom for those that were lost. Uh, and the devil fought him every step of the way. Right at the beginning of his ministry, the devil shows up with those temptations, those uh, uh, f- now famous temptations that are recorded in the Bible. And the Bible said that the enemy went away for a season. Granted, there were many more seasons that Satan showed up to attack Jesus and to bring temptation. And what I've come to declare to you that Jesus stood his ground and he's the sinless son of the living God. And because he lives, we shall live also. Can somebody shout amen? And you remember last week I talked about how uh, that they that when, when the Jews had half, when they had the wall had built halfway up, the, the wall was going to be anywhere from 13 feet to 28 feet in high, depending upon the landscape of, uh, uh, of uh, or the wall is going to be very high. But when they had it halfway up, the enemy shows up and he really lights in on them. 
And it's in the middle of our work where the enemy shows up and he really begins to try to defeat us, to discourage us, to overcome us. When he sees that we are sincere in our efforts, when he sees that, we, that we're dedicated to the mission that God has given us, I'm telling you, if the Lord, the Lord can speak, but if we don't take it seriously, if we take it lightheartedly, if we half-heartedly serve God, then the devil doesn't really step in. He doesn't really care. He doesn't really do much. He's not really going to do a whole lot to stop us. But when he sees we are sincere, when he sees that we have a mind that is made up, when he when he perceives that we are going to make uh, that we're going to destroy his kingdom and tear down his kingdom and bring souls out of darkness, then the devil gets upset. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he said, "Sin." Now, how did now the, the devices that Satan used? What did he do? Number one, we talked about weeks past. He ridiculed the work that was going on. And I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on these because I want to close by telling you how to overcome these weapons of Satan. But in verse 3, you see that the, here's what they said. The enemies, Sanballat and Tobiah, and those that gathered around, they said, they said <laughs> they're, they're, they're digging stones out of the rubble. And they're using burnt stones. And they're piling them up. And they said, even if a little fox, look at verse 3. Even that which they build, if a fox go up, they, uh, they, he shall even break down their stone wall. So they're saying, you know, stone is supposed to be strong. Stone walls are usually strong enough to hold up chariots. They're strong enough to hold up anything. But look at, look at their work. Uh, what, just a little fox could walk up their wall and it'll all come crumbling down. Does Satan ever do you that way? Does he ever ridicule what you're trying to do for God? Does he ever... How many, how many maybe had somebody when you first got saved, they said, well, you're, you won't last. I know you, you, you. I know you're trying to turn over a new leaf. I know you started going to church, uh, but you won't hold out. You'll never make it. You'll be right back in here with us before it's over. You'll be back to drinking. You'll be back to doing drugs. Uh, you'll be back to your old ways uh, before you know it. You'll be right back with us. Uh, they're ridiculing your salvation. They are putting you down for your efforts to build your life on a sure foundation. They are coming after you. Uh, but I'm telling you, ridicule is usually a probe when somebody says oh they, they seem like they're really sure of themselves amen anybody ever said that about you or to you well you just re, you really seem like you're really sure about yourself I'm sure about the God I serve I know I'm a low down nothing that don't deserve anything. I'm just dirt. I was created from the dirt, dust to the earth. But I'm going to tell you that there's a mighty God who one day laid His hand upon my life and changed it. He saw that there was something valuable in my life. Oh, hallelujah. And He did your life as well. And I'm telling you, when God puts that kind of value upon your life, don't ever let the devil tell you that you're not worth anything. Amen. God, God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Come on, somebody shout Amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and so when they say, well, you're really sure of yourself, they're probing your sincerity. And the devil will probe your sincerity. Are they really sincere? If I try to discourage them a little bit, if I, if I just get in their way a little bit, will they quit? And I'm telling you, it's kind of like the, 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 where Jesus talked about the parable of the sword and the seed. Some fell on stony ground, some fell among thorns. And all that. I'm telling you, we've got to open our heart up and receive the Word of God. And, and so the sun cannot, so that the scorching heat that comes around us when the devil turns up the heat will not evaporate the Word of God that's been planted in our lives. We've got to, we've got to take the heart, the, the Word of God, and hide it in our heart. David said, I hide your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. What? David is saying, I've got it here, and I'm going to protect that word. And there's no new, uh, no new age teaching. There's no uh, new doctrine. There's no devil. There's no wolf in sheep's clothing that's ever going to take the word out of my heart. Well, go ahead and give God a hand clap of praise, if you will. And if you respond to the, when the, to the devil when he tries to ridicule you, if you back down, he has won. He has won. Amen. But I'm telling you, the work of the true blood-bought church is being severely ridiculed by the world today. 
We've seen it lately. We've seen it when our own vice president said, I talk to God every day. And Jesus talks back with me. Somebody got on national television and just the lamb, uh, just let him have it, blasted him because it's called him that said he was mentally ill because he got on television and said, "I hear from Jesus." I'm here to tell you, I don't want to think about anybody being in that White House or any other place of government that does not hear from God. Amen. God is still in control. He's still on the throne. This book is not outdated. And I'm telling you, every man, every Every woman's going to have to stand before God one day and give an answer to Him for how we live our lives. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know that when you watch the... Listen, there's, there's a war going on in our world today. And, and, and it's our, our young people, I, you've heard me talk about it, and I feel the leading of the Holy Ghost to do it again today. Our, especially our youth, our young people, our, our high school, our college age students, even younger than that. Uh, they're, 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 some of them have teachers at school. Some of them have, will have college uni- uh, uh, university t- uh, professors. Uh, and, and then we have the media. All of those uh, are telling the word is outdated. You, you can't believe that stuff. You, you, you've got to rip this page out and that page out. You've got to get into the 21st century. I'm going to tell you, if we come into the 21st century and we leave God behind, we're going to be on our own. We need Jesus Christ. We need Him in our lives. We need Him to hold our hand as we go forward. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Every minister, if you notice on television, if they put a a, a character, a preacher, a minister character in any program or show, he's he's an egomaniac. He's mean-spirited. He's trying to undermine the joy of everybody. Uh, he's just trying to rob the youth of all fun, all those kind of things. They, they mock it, they make fun of it, but I'm going to tell you, we've got to keep preaching the Word of God. Amen. Church, it's not my opinion. It's not the opinion of a professor. It's not the opinion of some political leader. It's not the opinion of somebody on a talk show somewhere. It's what saith the Word of God. Come on, somebody shout Amen. The Bible said in the last days there will be seducers that come. And they're coming to pull people away from the gospel. They're doing a big job today. Amen. They're trying to make all kinds of sexual perversion look like it's acceptable. It's a part of life. It's the new wave. I'm here to tell you. Amen. God says He's going to judge that kind of living. Amen. We've got to stay away from it. Ridicule is one of the hardest forms of opposition to face. And the reason is because it normally don't come from strangers. If a stranger ridicules us, we can dismiss that. Well, that was, he don't really know me. Or she don't really know me. And going about our business. But ridicule often comes from our friends. And when a friend ridicules the work that you're doing, or when they ridicule what you're up to, what you're trying to do in your spiritual life, it hurts. It hurts deep. It cuts deep in our spirit. Amen? How many know what I'm talking about today? Moses, the Bible said Moses chose to suffer the affliction of his own people. He, Moses raised by Pharaoh in Pharaoh's house. He could have stayed there. But the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 29, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, when he was at the age, he could make his own decision. Do I stay in the palace or do I go back to the Hebrews? He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. I just feel the Holy Ghost saying that you can blend in with the world if you want to, but or you can choose to be a son of God and say, I will not try to blend. You can dislike me. You can disassociate from me if you want to, but I'm going to stand up for God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And then there's opposition by anger. In verse 7, the Bible said, Then they were very wroth, Sanballat and Tobiah uh, and, and, some, uh, and others. They were very wroth. They were very, if, if they ridicule you, they, make, they mock you, they, they make fun of you, uh, and, and that don't work, then they, then they get angry. Because you continue to serve the Lord. You know why they get angry? Because your life convicts them. Because the life that you're living, you're living a life according to the Word of God. And you don't have to wear a t-shirt every day that says, I am a Christian. And on the back it says, you're a sinner. You don't have to wear one of those shirts. All you have to do is show up on the job site. 
Show up in your neighborhood. Show up in your family and live the life. I have seen wives that were literally beaten for coming to church. Why? Because there's some husband that gets a little jealous back home. He, he doesn't want it. He's not living right. He's not trying, but he really don't want his wife to go try either. He don't really want her to go. He's jealous of the time she spends in church. And I've seen, I've, seen, I've been there. I've seen ladies come in with black eyes and bruises. I've had them come and tell me, Pastor, I've been abused. It don't happen as frequently now as it used to in years past. But I'm telling you, people are going, the, the enemy gets angry when we turn up the heat against the enemy. Amen? And he gets angry because our life convicts him. Our life convicts those around us who are lost, who are not trying. Amen? And Satan is certainly angry when he sees expansion within the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. The enemy gets angry because he notes what we're doing. But not only is the enemy aware of what we're doing, thank God the Lord sees what we're doing. Not only does God see what we're doing, not only does He see the efforts that we put forth to live right, but guess what? He, see, he hears every taunt. He hears every word of anger that is aimed in our direction. He knows everything the enemy is up to. He not only knows what we're doing, He knows what the enemy is up to. Amen? Hallelujah. And then there's opposition from discouragement. The enemy is always trying to discourage and look at verse 10 again. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of the burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we're not able to build the wall. In other words, they said, We're just going to quit because the work's so great, it's so hard. We're just going to quit. Satan is always trying to discourage God's people. I can hear them now as they stand out there trying to build the wall. Well, if I'd known it was going to be this hot. I'd have never volunteered for this job. If I'd have known that I was going to be so far from water and I was going to get so thirsty, I'd have stayed at home today. I'd have stayed on the air conditioner. I'd have had my Coke Zero. I'd have sat in my lazy chair and I'd let somebody else do this work. If I'd have known these stones were so heavy, if I'd have known the block layers were laying these blocks so fast, and I'm having to mix the mud and stay, and my back is hurting, I would have stayed. I'm telling you, working for God is hard work. And that working for God, you can't get discouraged if you give in to it. Come on, somebody shout amen. But I want you to know, amen, the enemy seeks to discourage us. God seeks to bring encouragement. And in fact, David, the Bible said of David, said David encouraged himself in the Lord. If there's not another soul pouring encouragement, get a hold of the Word of God, drop on your knees. And when you, when you pray and when you study the Word of God, when you listen to the right music and the right stuff, it will bring encouragement into your life. Amen. amen. Praise God. You know what? Discouragement and faith do not mix. Discouragement and faith do not mix. Discouragement begins when the thoughts are planted in the mind and we let them stay there. So when the enemy comes and he tries to put thoughts of discouragement in our mind, what do, we, we, do we entertain them? What do we do? Do the same thing you do when I'm preaching. That that you like, rake it in. And that that you don't, throw it over to the one behind you. <laughs> Amen. I'm just kidding with you. But we do need to do the enemy that way. Even when he tries to bring thoughts of discouragement, we need to bring, the, Paul said, casting down imaginations, everything that exalts itself above God. I'm going to tell you, we have no business listening to the enemy. We need to listen to the Word of God. Amen. The devil brings opposition by lure. He tries to lure us away from the position, from the job, from, the, from living right. In Nehemiah 6 and verse 2, he said, come. The enemy said to Nehemiah, come, let us meet together in some of the villages in the plain. Nehemiah's busy. He's got weapons in one hand. He's working with the other hand. And the enemy said, come down and come meet with us in the plain of Ono. Oh and five times, Nehemiah gave the same response. Five times the request came. Five times, Nehemiah said, I'm doing a great work. He wasn't boasting himself, but he said, the work of God is so important. I believe I, I, I can't come down. He knew they were plotting to kill him. And he, he knew that uh, cut off the head and the work stops. 
Amen. And so Nehemiah said, I'm not coming down. Can I tell you, the enemy is always going to try to lure you away from what God, what the, from the position that God's put you in. He's always going to try to lure you away from living right. I'm telling you, there are some places as believers we have no business going. And that's what Nehemiah knew. Amen. I have no business going down to the local bar. I had a member of one church, of course, he was teasing me. Within just about two miles of the church, we had Charlie's Go-Go. And this one member, he said, Pastor, don't you think me and you need to go down there Thursday night and pass out tracks? And he laughed when he said, I said, no, I don't think we have any business hanging out there. Amen. There are some places when you become a believer, you have no business going. You have no business in a bar. You have no business hanging out with, with a group that all they want to do is drink and do drugs and, and use the name of God in vain and all those things. I'm telling you, look for some new friends to hang out with. Because the devil will bring people across your path to lure you off the path, to lure you away from righteousness, to lure you away from the new life that you found in Jesus Christ. He's dangling everything he can think of in front of you. That's one of Satan's greatest devices that he uses. But I'm going to tell you, with every fiery dart, he fires in our direction. Thank God when we put the shield of faith up, it will extinguish that dart. Can somebody shout amen? Hallelujah. Opposition by false accusations. Probably everybody in this room that's been living right for any length of time could point to something you've been lied on. You can point to it that will come. That's a device. Then opposition by fear. Satan tries to put fear in our life. The Bible said in verse 11, Nehemiah 4 verse 11, And our adversaries said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. The devil says, he, he, that's the devil, you won't know. I'm gonna, and, and sometimes I've, I have run across Christians that were, were afraid to let the Holy Ghost move on Sunday upon them because they're afraid they're going to have to pay the price for it on Monday. And the enemy's got them convinced, you go ahead. You give God praise. You sing that song. You worship with triumph. But on Monday, you'll pay for it. You won't know what direction I'm coming from. You won't know from where I'm going to hit you next. But I'm going to tell you, God did not, He's not giving us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. We're not to cower down to the enemy. We're not to give in to the devil's threats. How many don't tell the truth today? Satan strikes our heart with fear if he can. And out of fear, we seek sometimes human devices. I'll just go hide out. But we've got to trust in the work of God's salvation. We've got to trust in the grace of God. Paul said, Paul said, I found his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Can I have a witness on that? So what can I do, Pastor, to fortify myself? To, to, to fortify myself against the devices of Satan, you've got to put the wall in place. He met Nehemiah. Let's go back to Nehemiah 4, verses 4 and 5. How, how did Nehemiah handle the ridicule? He said, Hear, O God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of the captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and, not their, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders." Nehemiah said, they're never going to listen to you. They're always going to try to come and get the enemies that they're being used by the devil. He said, just let them know the price, the punishment. Let them see the error of their ways. God, don't be merciful to those who are, who are against the church, is what he's saying. Who are against your people. In other words, God, let your wrath rain down upon them. You can stop them, God. I'm telling you, the, uh, God, God knows how to stop the enemy, Amen. In verse 19, nevertheless, we, uh, when, when Nehemiah was attacked by anger, in verse 9 he said, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because, in other words, hey, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walketh around seeking whom they may devour, but he's not going to sneak up on us. We are going to pray and we're going to listen to the voice of God. The Holy Ghost will guide us around the traps of the devil and we're going to sit with one eye open. In the spirit. Amen. When faced with discouragement, Nehemiah, 
He tells the people, remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. What he's saying is, when the devil piles it on, when the devil tries to push you down, when the devil tries to defeat you by using discouragement, remember the Lord. Remember the Lord that spoke the universe into existence. Remember the God who moved when you repented and washed away every sin out of your life. Remember the Lord who healed your body when you were sick. Remember the Lord who fixed your marriage when it was broken. Remember the Lord who supplied financial blessings when you were down and out and seeking Him. And remember God who's done the things that only He could do in your life. Remember the Lord. Remember, hey, He is big. We used to sing it when I was a boy in Sunday school. God is great. God is good. Even sometimes we said over our food, God is great. God is good. But I'm telling you, God is great. God is great. Amen. And we need to remember how great He really is. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. David said, when, when facing discouragement, he said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? In other words, he said, in my, in my mind, I feel like I've been run over by, I feel like I've lost every friend I've got. I've got a pit in my stomach. Why do I feel that way? Because in my spirit, I know how mighty my God is. You ever been there? I have. I've been there when I thought, why do I feel so stinking lousy? It doesn't matter what the devil's up to. Hey, i got to remember God. i got to remember the mighty God that I serve. Come on, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. God will help us overcome discouragement, amen. When Nehemiah, when, when the lures came, he stood firm. He said, I cannot come down. You, when, when, the, when, some, when the enemy tries to lure you away from God, your position in Christ, when, when he tries to lure you away from your walk of faith, you've got to do the same thing. I, 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 what I'm doing is so important. I don't have time to mess with you, devil. I'm through hanging out with you. I'm through hanging out with your minions. I'm through listening to your voice. I, I, I'm going to hang out with God and Him only. I'm not backing up. I'm not letting down. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God against false, false accusations. How did Nehemiah handle it? The false accusation, by the way, was you're going to get those walls built and, you, and all the Jews are going to hide up behind those walls and then you're going, to, you're going to start a massive rebellion against the king and you're going to be in trouble, oh boy. And Nehemiah said, not a word of that's true. He said, we haven't mentioned one time rebelling against the king. He was waiting for a greater king to come. Amen. So he just dismissed it and kept going. Against fear, he committed himself to God to trust him more. We have to put a plan in place of what we're going to do when the devil try, when, all, when, he, when he brings these devices against us. He may bring them all at once. He'll be one now and one down the road. Sometimes it may be more than one. He may be using one, more than one weapon at a time to try to bring us down, but we have to have a plan already in place. Amen? You, you know, it's kind of like at home. In fact, even Jesus said, he said, if the thief had known, or if the man of the house had known the hour the thief was going to show up, he would have he stayed up and waited on him. He would have been ready. Amen? I'm telling you what, we got to be ready. Be watchful, be alert. Amen. I like what Paul said. I'm coming to a close. The musicians will come. I like what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. He said, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We're not going to give a de the devil an upper hand. What Paul is saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, he said, If we stray from the word... We're going to give the devil an advantage to take us down. But as long as we believe it and live by it, then we give the devil not an inch to take us down. We're not ignorant of his devices. Every day, from my first thing when I get up in the morning, I have to make my mind up. Today, I'm going to keep the fence up. I'm going to keep the wall up around my life. If I give in to temptation, if I sin, if I let down here or there, a little bit of that wall comes down. The devil finds a way in. 
I make it easy for him to defeat me. But if we make our mind up, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. And we keep our defenses in place. Then the enemy cannot destroy us. Hallelujah. I had a dream this morning just before I woke up. And I just have to tell you about it because we've been preaching about this wall for several weeks now. But a dream, I had a dream last night. I saw a world filled with chaos. I saw people, massive amount of, a massive amount of people. And I saw demonic spirits tormenting and torturing and luring away and doing their thing. And all of a sudden, I saw a helicopter come and I saw church people hooking the cable of the helicopter up to those who are down in this world that are being tormented, hooking it up to them into, into a system that they had on and the helicopter would lift them up. And I saw in the dream that the helicopter, once it lifted them up, it would take them over the wall and set them down where there's peace and tranquility. And the Lord told me, He said, that's the job of the church. You've got to find those that are tormented. You've got to find those that are being tortured. You've got to find those that are lost. You've got to find those that are bound. You've got to find those that are half committed. And you've got to lift them up. Lift them up with my word. Lift them up by loving them. Love them enough to preach the truth to them. But we can't leave them like they are. We can't leave them as you stand with me this, this morning. Hallelujah. The church can't afford to be silent. We, we, have to find, we have to preach the Word. We can't just preach it beyond the walls of the sanctuary. We've got to preach it beyond the wall. We've got to preach it beyond the church campus. We've got to take the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and lift people up. We've got to tell them the truth. They're not going to hear it in the schoolhouses. They're not going to hear it at the universities. They're not going to hear it from our media. Every show you watch today is pushing perversion on our youth. They're making it look commonplace. Yeah, just, just this, this week, this week, Mike Huckabee, our former governor from here in Arkansas, he was appointed over the board of directors for the CMA, the Country Music Academy. The very day he was appointed, he, was, he turned in his resignation. And the reason he turned in his resignation because some country music groups said, we don't like your choice of Mike Huckabee. He preaches against the lifestyle that we live. He stands against us. He's trying to take away our rights. And we're not going to be associated with the Country Music Academy any longer if you keep him in place. He gets appointed. The very day he resigns. That's where the world's at today. The world doesn't love the message of the church. But with love, the church has to continue proclaiming the message. Amen. We don't, we don't hate the sinner. We're not against the sinner. But we're obligated to our God to preach against sin. The Word of God reveals sin. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin. And the blood of Jesus washes away our sin. Amen. Glory to God. How can they believe unless they hear? And how can they hear unless somebody goes and preaches? we got to keep living it. we got to keep preaching it. Amen. With love, we have to preach it. I want you today, if you're here and you're lost, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would invite you to this altar. There's nothing more important that could possibly happen in this day than for somebody to find Christ in these altars. And today, if you've, never, if you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, if you've never invited Him into your heart, if you've never given your life over to Him, today's the day. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleading with you today, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior, come to these altars right now. And we want to pray with you. We'll lead you in the sinner's prayer. We'll help you, we'll help you get it right. We'll help you pray through. Will you come? I know the Holy Ghost is dealing with somebody right now. I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to hearts in this place. You can leave like you came or you can leave a different way. It's up to you.
Will you come? You may be looking around thinking, Pastor, that's hard. That's some of you that's new to us. You may, there may be somebody lost that's here that's new to us. You may think, I don't know if I can walk up there in front of all these people. You can do it. You can do it. Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus picked up a cross that belonged to you. And he carried up Calvary's hillside in front of a bunch of strangers that mocked him. You can do it. Will you come? Will you return his love? Will you return the love that he's shown towards you? Come right now. Hallelujah. Begin, let's, singers begin to sing. Hallelujah. As they sing it, as they lead us in worship, please come if you need something from God today.